Hi, and uh, this is Steve, the Travelling Professor. Welcome to another episode uh, in our series. Today, we're in the Kingdom of Cambodia. Uh, Cambodia has seen great uh, increases in tourist numbers in the last few years. In 2014, four and a half million tourists came to Cambodia. Some of the attractions are, of course, the capital, Phnom Penh, and the world-famous uh, Angkor Wat and surrounding temples at Sia Reap. Uh, today we are here at Kabul Sipian, uh, which is a, a riverbed which has some ancient carvings in, into it. Uh, we'll see later we have uh, some of the Hindu gods, Vishnu, uh, and uh, lots of th uh, thousands of lingas, which are small pagodas, also uh, around and carved into the rock. So, as I said, Cambodia, the uh, as the destination marketing organization calls it, the kingdom of wonders. So we're going to be having a look uh, into some of the tourist attractions at Cambodia. The carving began in the reign of King Suravarman I and ended with the reign of King Uday Aditya Varman II. These two kings ruled between the 11th and 12th century. The archaeological site was discovered in 1969. So often a lot of the tourism uh, that we see internationally is people from the wealthy developed countries going to developing countries. Some people have argued that it's the greatest distribution uh, of wealth from uh, rich to poor that's ever happened across time. But other people say it's a, a gross uh, exploitation that the periphery, that the developing countries are, are just the playground, the plaything for developed countries. Uh, we can see here a situation where uh, there's a lot of uh, Western tourists uh, taking photos of uh, little children. Whether this is appropriate raises a certain question. However, we also see the girls selling souvenirs and the, and the parents sitting not very far away. So it also brings up a question of who's exploiting who. The parents putting the children in that situation to, to uh, promote and be cute and to uh, sell their souvenirs. Or the tourists uh, taking, uh, taking photos of uh, these, uh, ch these children uh, and perhaps buying trinkets off them, seeing them as a zoification, like being in a zoo, taking photos of uh, these uh, local people. Okay, here we are, night time in Siem, Siem Reap. This is Pub Street. Well, I hope it was called Pub Street after all the pubs and not before. Otherwise, it was fairly deterministic on what was going to happen in this street. But as you can see, wall, wall to wall, pub next to pub, next to restaurant, next to pub. For the hedonistic, for those that really want to, uh, the backpackers that are trying to find themselves, this, you can see by some of the crowd, this is where they're going to come. The beers are cheap. One beer, 50 US cents for one, uh, one glass of beer. Massage places, uh, side to side. We've got a foot massage, one US dollar or two US dollars, depending on the place, for one hour. Can you believe that? I mean, that is just crazy. As you can see, chock a block full of people. Next, we've also got the, the locals with the band. Okay, this band are uh, raising money for some of their uh, medical uh, treatments. The band playing traditional music uh, uh, consists of members who have had uh, illnesses or disabilities be because of uh, either landmines or Agent Orange in the, uh, in the ground, left over from, uh, as a remnant of left over from the war that uh, happened uh, in the 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s. Many people travel overseas for the food and the, or culinary tourism. Now here we have 
uh, one of the delicacies. It was eaten uh, in the in the Khmer Rouge area when when people didn't have enough food, uh, they had, had to resort to eating the bugs and the spiders. So here's a uh, scorpion, and the travel professor uh, is going to be a foodie. Uh, generation Generation Y. All they do these days on social media is take photos of their food and upload it. So it's it's become a really uh, a really popular thing for tourists to do. Okay, I'm going to try to describe the taste. We'll go with the claw first. Well, because it's crunchy, it's got a lot of sauce. So it's a bit like hmm, how would you describe it? It's a bit like crackling or pork crackling or maybe the, the beef skin that really barbecue mm. Mm. it has like a soy sauce on the outside um, and so it's a car caramelized on the outside but it is fairly meaty I mean you wouldn't say no to a just full of this it goes well with beer, it's quite salty, so it'll go quite well with a, with a local beer. We also have tarantula. Alright, so that's down. Tarantula. Well, as you know, it's a spider. So I'll go for the legs and the, the front legs and the head first. Mmm. Somewhat similar texture, a bit softer, not as crunchy as the scorpion. I'm getting not bad. I've got to say probably the a bit nutty. Okay, so after a delicious meal of, of tarantula and scorpion, what better way than to wash it down with a freshly uh, produced uh, shape? We've got in Southeast Asia. There's so many cool fruits. We've got. Dragon fruit, rambutan, passion fruit, bananas. The mango is delicious. I'm having, I'm having uh, jackfruit. 